On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Airstrikes and a promise from a president to use force with deliberate purpose. These carefully targeted actions are designed to disrupt the use of Afghanistan as a terrorist base of operations. The Allies' military aims in Afghanistan were at first clearly prescribed, destroy al-Qaeda and render the Taliban unable to help it. The military action we are taking will be targeted against places we know to be involved in the al-Qaeda network of terror or against the military apparatus of the Taliban. But then the mission morphed, expanding into what sounded like nation building. We know that true peace will only be achieved when we give the Afghan people the means to achieve their own aspirations. Whatever that meant, the Allies would spend another two decades and two trillion dollars trying to achieve it. John Negroponte was U.S. ambassador to the U.N. at the time. Having clearly defined objectives at the, before you enter into a conflict, I think always carries with it substantial risks. But in terms of what happened in Afghanistan, was it a mistake to take on nation building, to expand that mission outwards? It certainly it was a risky proposition, and uh, uh, you could call it a mistake. But it wasn't just mission creep. A huge distraction was coming that would undo the chances of success. General Sir Robert Fry commanded the Royal Marines in Afghanistan. I think there was an opportunity, fleeting, and squandered, but there was an opportunity which, had it been properly um, exploited, could have perhaps have created a lasting solution, or if that was too much to hope, at least given the Afghans themselves a fighting chance to sort themselves out. The reason it went wrong was Iraq. Of the Labour cabinet who voted for military action in 2001, only one would talk about it now. Claire Short unsparing in her assessment of the West's achievement in the decades that followed. It's a failure. I mean, it's, it's a, a terrible cost in human life and masses of money spent that hasn't brought a beneficial outcome for the people of Afghanistan. And it's a humiliation for NATO. I mean, it really is. The Taliban beat NATO. More than 450 British lives have been lost in Afghanistan. More than 2,000 American. Tens of thousands of Afghan civilians have died. The cost has been put at something over two and a quarter trillion dollars. If, as seems more than possible, the Taliban can now sweep back to power, what was all that sacrifice for? Afghan forces must rely on themselves now and their training. The true test has yet to come. If they fail to hold back the Taliban, the West's adventure in Afghanistan is doomed to spectacular and costly failure. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News.